All right, guys, today is Monday, September 20th, 2021. Today marks day 17 on the 55 four-door project. Today is the third day on the firewall, uh, and I'm actually modifying the factory deluxe heater box and assembly, blower motor stuff, uh, basically taking the steel studs out of the box, the heater box, and the bracket that holds the blower motor on. Those are the studs that actually come through the firewall. I am removing those and welding in stainless steel bolts that I'm actually doing some work on first before I weld them in. And then I will go through and use my little portable sandblaster and I will blast the heater box stuff. Um, you know, put some masking tape on the bolts that'll protect them enough. <clears throat> but anyway, that'll allow me to restore the heater box to make it look new again. So. Anyway, it'll all be replaced with stainless steel hardware and it will look better and it won't rust. So, originally, your heater box studs uh, look like this, which two of these were bent. So, you have steel studs that are, I think they're like an inch and a half long, sticking out. Now, I've replaced these before, like I did at my hardtop and I did it in another car a long time ago, but... I like to replace them with just a little bit shorter bolt, so I get an inch and a quarter underhead length stainless steel quarter by 20 bolt. And that's what I usually use because these studs are way long, longer than they need to be. But going through my stainless steel hardware here, I did not have enough. I actually didn't even have inch and a quarters at all. So I went uh, to my local uh, tractor supply across the street and I bought uh, uh, it was you get two in a bag so I got uh, three bags which is all they had they were out of inch and a quarter so all I had was inch and a half so that kind of sucks so they're gonna be exact same length as what was in there but uh, at least it's better than a steel uh, stud coming through there so anyway I'm doing some work on these bolts before I weld them in you can see on the end of the bolt right there how rough it kind of looks uh, so I basically take a, a blue scotch at disc which is right here on my 90 degree angle grinder and I smooth that really nice and then I polish it on the polishing wheel and I polish the whole all the threads and a little bit of the stem here so anyway I polish it before I put it on there it's just easier to do that way now right here I can show you I just got done welding this a few minutes ago this is the blower motor housing right here eh, it's still a little warm but not bad so I put these, just some old spacers I had in the box just to put tension on the head bolts while I welded them in there. All right, so I replaced the studs with stainless steel and you can see the end of the, the bolts there, how much cleaner they look after doing the work. But anyway, the blower motor bolts to this and this will actually end up uh, going through the firewall. Now, originally these cars have and I will reuse them. I have them in a Ziploc bag in my shed for this car, but this is just a slide tray of stuff I had left over. But this is the kind of spacers that they come with. Now these spacers, there you should have five. Three for this, two for the main box. But anyway, you'll put the sleeves on first. And then you'll basically put it in here. Like this. If I can do this one-handed. I don't have a sleeve on the top, so it's not going to have it even. But Anyway, so now I have stainless steel hardware coming out of the firewall instead of steel. So now I can put a stainless steel flange nut on here and it'll look a lot cleaner. But Anyway, it'll be these three here for the blower motor, and there will be one here and one up here for the main heater box, which is right here. This is the back side of the heater box. And I basically just went in there with my 90 degree angle grinder with a 36 Norton Blaze disc. And I ground that until the bolt pretty much fell out of it. The stud just fell off. And then I basically take a quarter inch drill bit and run through there to open it up and make it true again. And then I will stick the bolt down in there like this. Well, I trimmed it up with a drill bit, but it ain't true enough. Looks like I get to do it again. Wow. That's freaking awesome. 
this one goes. Anyway, I'll weld that bolt in there like that. Now, the problem is, when you go to put your heater core in here, the heater core is pretty wide. So you basically, after you weld this in, you need to go in and grind this about halfway down to get it down a little bit. Because the studs that were in here, the head of it is a little bit thinner than this bolt head. So if you just put your heater core in there on top of that, it would actually bend your fins on your heater core. It probably wouldn't much matter, but if there's any vibration in this stuff with the car running and driving, you know, it could cause a leak. So I'm gonna, after I weld this in, I'm gonna ground it about halfway down. But after this is all done, I will go in here and blast all this heater box stuff with my old portable blaster. I will mask off the uh, bolts there, the threaded part, and uh, then blast it, and then, you know, do all the preparation to paint it. But this uh, finish on these heater boxes is a hammer tone finish. And uh, this Krylon makes one that is, I want to say it's called Black Hammer Tone because the, the gray is a little bit too light for my taste. There's nothing that Krylon makes that's a perfect match as original. But anyway, I do have a few cans of that in my garage. But I will more than likely paint it the same color I did my hard tops, which is Honda Galaxy Gray Base Coat Clear Coat because I, I had a quart of that mixed and I have quite a bit left. So I'll probably spray all the heater box with that stuff. It, uh, you probably can't see it because it's too dang dark in here. Yeah, it's too dark, but it gives it kind of a grayish, greenish, you know, tinge to it. But um, Anyway, welding the studs in there like you do, it, or like I do it. Like on that one, I have a stud welded to the firewall on the backside for that heater box to bolt to, and I've got an acorn nut and a washer on there for looks. So to me, it's just a lot cleaner looking. But, Anyway, I don't mind doing this little bit of work like this because, you know, in the end, it's it's a good good looking job. Um, nice detail. Uh, probably total by the time I get done uh, polishing the bolts and, you know, grinding the studs out and doing all the stuff and re-welding the new ones in. I'm probably going to have about an hour in it. Uh, so to me, for an hour of work, it was, I think it'll be worth it. Um, you know, those, those studs that are on the firewall from the factory, on the heater box stuff from the factory are steel, so they're gonna rust. And uh, like these, they're usually, sometimes they're bent anyway, so uh, to me, uh, you know, just putting a stainless steel nut on there, you've still got a rusty stem, a rusty stud there. So I am gonna replace it all, where it's all stainless steel. So just another hour's worth of work, but in the end, it's, it's worth it. So that's a good before and after for you right there. You can see the before bolt on the right, the end of the bolt, how nasty it looks. So it's kind of uneven, got a little, you know, ripplies and waviness to it. So this is pretty much uh, what I'll do is use this and just grind it smooth a little bit. So let's see if I can hold this between my legs while I do this. That one's got a deep end in it. Have to go a little bit harsher on it. Good golly, I can't even get that indent out of that stupid bolt. Golly. That 36 will take it out by golly. You can imagine how hot this bolt is by now. Golly. Well, that one took the longest amount of work.
Yeah, the bolt's pretty warm. That's what it looks like afterwards. So to me, that's pretty worth it. So, I'm glad all those others didn't take that long, but anyway, I gotta put the two studs, or the bolts, in the heater box here and weld them up, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I gotta rig up my stuff here, so let's get that going. All right, so I just laid it up in there. There's no sleeves on it, so they're sticking out pretty far, but anyway, that is a polished stainless steel stud now coming out of the heater box stuff. So uh, originally, I'm going off memory. I think it takes a flat washer, a lock washer, and just a regular nut on the factory stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna probably use is a flange nut, you know, a nut that has the shoulder on it basically, instead of having three pieces. Um, I don't know yet. I'll have to dig through my stainless stuff. It kind of depends on what I have. I may just put regular nuts, lock washers, and flat washers on it. That's all I got. But ARP nuts would be really nice because they are flanged. But I don't really want to spend the money on them. But Anyway, so I would say about an hour's worth of work. So after I welded those two studs in there just then, the what I got was I got two, no, three two packs of those bolts inch and a half long quarter by 20s and I polished five of them so then I did those in that first and then you just watched me weld these in and then after I turn it over and look at it one of them wasn't sanded and polished yet so I had to basically take it over the buffing wheel with the with it on the box which it wasn't a big deal but you know I had to sand the end and then polish it on the polishing wheel because the polished ones laying down there on the ground so I put the wrong one in it correct bolt it just wasn't prepped before so anyway that is pretty much done so this car was a standard heater and i'm putting in a deluxe heater the standard heater cars have a block off plate here with four clutch head screws uh, if you're going to put a deluxe heater in your car you're going to need that little uh, flanged bracket that screws on here that comes out you know has a lip on it for a seal to go to so Anyway, I do have this piece. I got it from a friend uh, that had it on a parts car. So, anyway, I'm converting all to deluxe heater. All right, guys, another little tip here for you budget guys like me. Uh, I have noticed in the parts catalogs for these cars, a, a new blower motor is pretty expensive. I don't remember what it was in the catalog. At my local O'Reilly's, it's like 25 bucks. So... Uh, it's a lot cheaper from a parts store, which I haven't looked at Rock Auto. It's probably way cheaper than that. But anyway, these things are, uh, you know, an old used one. It's I had drug these old cars in from the past, and I'd drill a little hole in the end of this, and then I'd shoot some WD-40 in there, and I could get it freed up, and it would work for a little while, but it would always end up, it just burn up or start making noise. So it's always best just to replace them right off the bat. This one's seized up. It won't even turn, so... Anyway, I removed it, and if you've never removed one of these, it's not too bad of a job. Um, 
that stem of this is flat sided on one side it comes up through this you can see the holes flat sided uh, but anyway it'll have a little push clip on it like this and i've always found it best to get those off with a little tiny jeweler's flat just kind of get it down in there and then just lift up and it kind of bends that prong up and then the thing will come off pretty good now if you crack this or it's you know busted in half it still looks like it's together but it's cracked do not reuse it because this will end up walking off the end of your blower motor and wind up down in there so replace it if if necessary so i think when you get a new blower motor it comes with that but and also another tip i'll give you if you buy a new one the wire comes out the front side of the motor instead of the back this would normally go in behind you know all the stuff the heater box and stuff in the inside of the car the new ones, when this motor's coming out of the firewall like this, the new ones, the wire comes out out here. So if you want to loop this back around to the inside of the car, you'll need to drill a hole and put a rubber grommet on it for the wire. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, that is going to do it for today, Monday, on the 17th uh, day of the thrash here on the 55. It's, uh, I don't know, about 4 p.m.-ish. I just come back out here. I've been in the house for about an hour. I pulled a muscle in my back and I didn't even really do anything. All I did was try to push my welder closer to the car and it it just did it. So I'm having a hard time on my left side even trying to move my arm. So I think I'm just going to quit for the day. Just go in and, I don't know, maybe take a bath and some Epsom salt or something. Man, it sucks. <laughs> I cannot believe. I can't even do the smallest tasks without something happening but at least i got a little bit of progress done today you know there's always that anyway i'm gonna cut it off thanks for watching guys